Hey, what's up, guys? Arava here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 113 today for the French Grand Prix in Season 6. If you guys did miss the previous one, then at the Canadian Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. But heading to this episode, then, no upgrades for us. We're still waiting on that ultimate chassis weight reduction upgrade. We might make an upgrade at the end of this episode going into Austria, but we plateau, and Renault continue to develop. So they're already, you know, got a lead in the performance data, and yet they still keep plowing on like they have done in previous seasons. You know, Renault have been one of the most rapid upgraders in the past two seasons, really, uh, ever since the kind of European season kicks off. But they're starting even earlier here. They started off in like round three upgrading and they've been steadily just plowing away and they're actually increasing their gap on the performance chart. Well, it, re it remains to be seen that's actually going to, uh, you know, uh, affect things. In Canada, uh, Sainz was pretty dominant, obviously, but Ricardo, uh, spoiler alert, by now you should have seen it by now. If you haven't, that's your own fault. Ricardo had a DNF at Canada. So so there's kind of a two, you know, two sides of the coin there for Renault. They are improving. They are very dominant if they get everything right. But there have been far too many mistakes on the strategy and reliability issues for Dan Ricciardo, at least. Uh, Carlos Sainz has been a bit more consistent. But at the same time, we've also seen Sainz not qualify too well in a lot of races in this Season 6 so far. So it's kind of, yeah, it will remain to be seen if Renault truly are going to be this dominant force. We might just find out this episode, maybe, if both of them can stay on the track. Because I think that's the largest gap they've had now in the performance chart since Fantastic. the very beginning of the season then. So the we moved time. through Q1. That was uh, just a formality into Q2. Now we set that first flying lap on all soft tyres. And then for our second flying lap, we move back on to the super softs then. So we've done this before where we qualified on the fastest tyre into Q2, made sure we could get into the top 10 shootout. Then we go for another run on the super soft tyres, the middle compound of tyre. And all we have to do is try and match our lap time on the ultras and just improve by literally 1,000th will do. And we'll be able to start on this set of tyres tomorrow on the race day. And so you can see on the top right, we just about improved there. Not by much, marginal improvements. But we do make it through into Q3 then on that super soft set. So we can start the race then on that tyre and set ourselves up for a very good one stop. I don't think there's going to be any rain involved for tomorrow's race. So this really be, will be very important for us and you know maybe allow us to tackle the Renaults if they do have that dominant pace. But we go through now into the top 10 shootout here. And you can see we set our first flying lap and our second flying lap. We just about make it across the line there on the top right. Look at the timer there. We had two seconds left as I crossed the line to start my second flying lap there. So I consider myself very lucky indeed to start this second run. Obviously, both times were on uh, the sets of fresh old soft tyres. But I do gain a decent amount on this second uh, run here. We're down in what is going to be P4 at the moment. Science ahead of us. So by uh, such an improvement, I was hoping we could go a fair few positions up the order, maybe onto the front row. Across the line, though, it, it, despite improving by that much, it's still only P4 on the grid because you can see there Dan Ricciardo with a very good performance there. Lewis Hamilton actually pulled out of the bag. I don't know how, he, how he's done that. He's in second place with a great, crazy time, actually, ahead of Carlos Sainz. And then Verstappen Tomorrow. really didn't turn up to the session there in P7. And then also Van Dorn didn't set lap time so a very odd top 10 shootout in a way so I don't think that really fully tells the full story of who's going to be good in the race but all I know is all of these guys are going to start on off soft tyres I'm going to be starting on supers so we have a very good chance for a one stop here and even if that Renault pace carries forward into the race I think we have a very good shot at a, at a win potentially if we can pull off the one stop and defend from the Renault cars when it comes to the end of the race so let's go into the grid then and see how things shape up at the start of Sunday. Hello and welcome to the circuit Paul Ricard, current home of the French Grand Prix and events dating all the way back to 1906. It's been held at many venues over the years with famous moments from Dijon and Manicor, the feature of many a highlights reel. And let's hope we see more of those in the race today. Six lefts and nine rights give us a total of 15 corners here at the circuit Paul Ricard and a lap covers an overall distance of 3.6 miles. Average speeds will be somewhere in the region of 142 miles per hour and they'll be maxing out on the Mistral Strait at around 205 miles per hour. Anthony Davidson joins me again for the race today. Let's talk about the engineer. That was a solid result in their last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. 
So now let's take a look at the starting grid ahead of this French Grand Prix for Season 6 of F1 2018 career mode. On the front row, pole position goes to the Australian man in the Renault, Danny Ricciardo, alongside Lewis Hamilton in a very improved Mercedes guy, it would seem, in second place there. Third place is Carlos Sainz, the second of the Renault pair, myself in fourth place on the second row. Then you have Pierre Gasly, the home favourite then fifth, with Fernando Alonso sixth. The Stapp and Vettel on the next row with Ocon and Van Dorn rounding out the top ten. Holcomo Perez next with Leclerc and Harley on the next row. Then the two houses in 15th and 16th with Kimi Räikkönen in P17 alongside Valtteri Bottas, his fellow Finn. And the two Williams line up on the last row of the grid to round out the grid for the French Grand Prix. Right, so no engine penalties, actually, surprisingly, at the French Grand Prix. So it all stays put. We're in P4 alongside Carlos Sainz on the second row of the grid. But here is the strategy then, and potentially the winning strategy for us today on a one-stop super soft tyre to the soft tyre. Of course, these guys will be starting on ultras, and we'll probably go to either two sets of super softs, or we have seen them very weirdly use all three sets of tyres throughout the Grand Prix. So definitely, either way, we will be in a trap position advantage. But like previous seasons, we have seen if you have enough pace on a two-stop, that is you know you are able to overtake around this track definitely with the slipstream down the back straight so it will be a challenge today but we have a very good shot at maybe getting the win here let's find out shall we as we go to five red lights then for the french grand prix in season six the lights are out instantly and we're underway it's a good getaway there from both renault cars especially carlos Sainz there that rockets on the left hand side of hamilton and the same for the home favorite here gasly ahead of me alonso comes out of nowhere so i've been swamped into turn one we take turn two we're going to throw to the inside of fernando alonso then it's three wide because I think Gasly's still there on the outside there. So we are just about going to force our way through on the right. Then the left still on the outside to the inside for the next right. Over the curbs and we'll get into P4. And Alonso will take Gasly then. And you can see actually Hamilton successfully got P2 back actually. I thought Carlos Sainz had that for sure. But no, the, the, my fellow countryman there is still in P2. But I think it's only a matter of time before Hamilton is down to P3. As we move on then rapidly through this Grand Prix then. And we get going through the laps with Stafford and gain some confidence then. Obviously a very bad time in qualifying, but he locks up badly actually, so I spoke way too soon. The commentator's curse came out there as he tried to overtake Alonso, locked up badly. He actually lost the position to Gasly then as we knew, uh, now move back onto our POV on lap three this is with DRS open for the first time now, and we're trying to get on Hamilton, who like I said was eventually going to go down to P3, so it's a 1-2 for Renault. We just don't have quite this speed to close up to Hamilton to make the move into this chicane quite yet on lap three, but if we're patient enough, I I think on the next lap we might have a better run as we try and close through in the first sector and try and keep this car as close as we can to the rear end of Hamilton. And also I suspect maybe Hamilton was deploying some more uh, more ERS than uh, I was on that previous lap because here I get a worse exit off that first section and I'm actually arguably further back from Hamilton but now I'm gaining much faster so I think Hamilton must have been deploying all the ERS he had on that previous lap because now I fly by him up into P3 this is on lap 4 we just about slow the thing down though because I had so much overspeed from the DRS and my overtake on the ERS and I nearly went completely off the track as we now move on to the next lap lap 5 through the last corner we're a little bit poor there on the exits we've got on the curbing and so Hamilton might have a chance to send this one back there with DRS on the pit straight so a battle for P3 brewing between the two Brits here. We're on the outside then. He's going to squeeze us quite hard to the curb. And so we have to lose a bit of traction. We have to slot back in for P4. So fair play to Hamilton for coming back. And it just shows, like I mentioned last episode, how much more Mercedes have been improving as of late. They're kind of making a resurgence in the last two seasons, really. And they are, you know, the closest team to us in the performance chart, actually. So fair play to Hamilton. So we have to work a little bit harder and try and re-overtake him now for the third time. Is a charm, hopefully, now on that. 5, DRS open again, Rich Mix going overtake mode, and we're going to fly, and we're going to gain, and gain, and gain, he's sparking away, no DRS for him though this time, and we're going to really be quite aggressive to the apex there, and shut off that move instantly, and we're back up into P3, now hopefully we'll get away from him and try and settle down to some sort of the rhythm of this first stint, because essentially we're kind of waiting now for the pit stops to come in for the Renaults, and so Science will be in then on lap 5, so quite an early pit stop so we're up into P2, Hamilton will continue on with me for one more lap, and Ricardo will continue on but all these guys remember crucial and ultras i'm on super soft so i can go a lot longer verstappen's in as well and so eventually we will get into first place we'll have trap position it's that classic case we've done it so many times at the french Grand Prix so far where we take it to first place on supers we go into soft tires and then it's basically can we keep up our minimum lap times to keep ahead of the guys behind us on faster tires as ricardo's now in hamilton's in and so we're in first place of the french grand prix into turn one we go behind us it will be nico holkenberg i think in the other mercedes Car doing a great job. He was outside the 
the top 10, though, unlike his teammate up in uh, P2, in a lofty P2 on the grid. But he's doing a much better job now, maybe, in this race strategy for Hulkenberg. And then behind, you've got a whole gaggle of cars, the Saubers, you know, Ferrari there as well. And there is the leader, Ricardo, there. And you've got a one car in between him and Carlos Sainz of the Williams. Uh, but these two now will have to make their way through. They're both on super soft. So, they, as I said, they might go to another set of supers at the end of the Grand Prix. I have seen AI do some very weird strategies where they go on soft tyres as well at the very end. So we'll have to see about that really. But as we go on through this Grand Prix on lap number eight, this will be on the last sector. This safety car is called out then, the full safety car. And that's very well timed and very lucky for us because we're in the last sector here this is. So we're going to come in for a pit stop instantly and get a free pit stop. So thank you very much, FIA. Thank you very much, safety car, for about what seems like the five billionth time We've uh, really taken advantage of a safety car in our favour there. And we're onto a set of soft tyres now. So remember now, we're good to go to the end of the Grand Prix. And we'll be right up behind both Renaults. And they'll still have to make one more pit stop. So we've got a, bit of, a big advantage here. And the safety car was actually called out because Max Verstappen, our teammate, is out of the Grand Prix. So a bit of a, you know, 50-50 then. It's unfortunate that my teammate going out of the Grand Prix was what caused the safety car. But at least, you know, I'm the lone wolf flying the flag. I can have a good position here. But it's a bit of a shame for the constructors that Verstappen will lose out here. Uh, Here's a replay now of what happened. So it actually started with Verstappen making his way through. He's made one pit stop at this point in the Grand Prix as well, remember. Nice overtake on the Force Indy. You've got, oh, a very slow McLaren car there. I think that is a Fernando Alonso with a puncher. I think that is. So I can kind of tell what's going to happen here. Oh, Verstappen hits the slow McLaren and is out of this Grand Prix. Here's an onboard shot. There is Alonso with a puncher there. And he's in the middle of the racetrack. And uh, Verstappen just blindsided, I guess. Maybe looking behind him, you know, too worried about uh, the force in. He doesn't look ahead enough, and so he's completely out of the Grand Prix there. So I thought that was maybe a mechanical issue. I'm kind of happier, maybe, in a way. It was that kind of collision that took him out, so it wasn't a mechanical failure. So that may, it kind of speaks better for our car. But on the restart then, green flag's gone. Uh, the Renault guys have bolted, really. Remember, they may be right ahead of us, but they are on faster tyres here, so... Uh, I don't have any chance of really attacking them at the moment on the on the restart, but I don't have to because I can take this easy. They've got to wait and make one more stop. I can just chill out here, make sure I don't fall behind Gasly. That is my biggest worry, really, but even he's going to pit again, so I just need to make sure I don't lose 20 seconds to them in the next couple of laps because that's obviously going to be a pit stop there, but Carlos Sainz actually is in the lead of this Grand Prix, I didn't see, so somewhere we've missed Carlos Sainz actually overtaking Ricardo. Remember, Ricardo was on that, what that was leading for this, this entire of this Grand Prix, so somewhere in the mix, Science has overtaken Ricardo for the lead, and Ricardo will be the actually first Renault guy that comes in from second place for his uh, first second pit stop of the Grand Prix. So we're still continuing on on soft tyres, but Carlos Science maintains his lead on super softs, but eventually he will also have to come in. And so I imagine, I, d I don't know, maybe Ricardo might have a chance to undercut him. Let's see about that. But Science will come in eventually, and we'll be there across the line, and we'll take the lead of the French Grand Prix. And actually, what I didn't know at the time, a lot of the people that were on a one-stop with me, i.e. Holkenberg, who was right behind me in second place, I think he massively lost out in the safety car. I think he either got in traffic or also made the wrong pit stop for a wrong set of tyres because he's now nowhere near us. And it's actually his teammate Hamilton that's closer to us than him, uh, with him in third place. You've got uh, one of the Torosas in uh, second there. I think that's Van Dorn that just overtook Hamilton as we caught on to that replay. As we go on through, you can see all these cars on super soft tyres. They'll be all making another pit stop. And Red Renault have actually come out in a pretty good position there. Is now Carlos Sainz still uh, the first man of the Renaults around the outside of the Williams cars. As Ricardo makes a nice little move on the McLaren car, but the McLaren actually fights back, to be fair to him. But these two Renaults will actually have the luxury of being in clean air eventually as we go on through this Grand Prix. Uh, they will have clean air to try and chase after me, whereas I thought they might hit traffic with the one-stoppers, but pretty much I'm the only one-stopper left, it looks like, because they're going to have basically clean, uh, clean track to try and uh, close up. So now we've moved all the way on to lap 20, Two, five laps to go in this Grand Prix there. So this Grand Prix's flown by, but we've got a yellow flag on our head. Valtteri Bottas there. I think that's him parking up in the Sauber. But we have got major issues now. Look at the bottom right. It's all a bit of deja vu from the USA Grand Prix. We've got major gearbox issues there. Over 90% worn on the gearbox. The red triangle with exclamation marks. So this gearbox is in a bit of a worrying state. So you might be able to hear and see on the engine revs. I'm making sure I'm not revving past the green lights on the upshift. So I essentially... You know, uh, upshifting very early, short shifting as we go up the gears and also down the gears. I'm making sure I'm waiting, uh, you know, a good five seconds before I downshift. 
And so this might be a major issue and concern for us because we've got five laps to go. And we had a similar situation at USA last season, remember? And we had to end up, we ended up retiring because the gearbox got to 100% worn. So, so the story of this French Grand Prix certainly isn't over then as we move on out to a replay camera though. And this might be a kind of double-edged sword saving grace for us as there's a Force India with a retirement. Sergio Perez with an engine failure. He's going to park up at the last corner. And so as we go through now on lap 24 into the end of late sector one, another safety guard gets called out. But this is why I'm saying it's a double-edged sword because yes, now a safety guard to the end of this Grand Prix will have, you know, two laps and we'll have a sprint race to the end. This will save my gearbox because now I can go lean mixture, none ERS. I don't need to go up the gears at any kind of pace so I can take this nice and easy. So this will help me nurse the gearbox in this Grand Prix so we don't do a repeat of USA from last season and DNF out the Grand Prix with 100% gearbox failure. But at the same time, I say it's a double-edged sword because now Science, he was one one second or two seconds behind us. He's now going to be right on the back of us on this restart. And now our car is not going to be as fast as it can be on the acceleration due to me having to short shift up the gears on the restart. And also Ricardo's going to be right there. Everyone's going to be right there. So not only will we be now under threat from both Renaults, we might be under threat from other cars because we are going to have to go a lot slower than we, uh, we know we can because I'm having to, you know, manage these gearbox issues albeit the safety car is helping with that. Um, so it might be a case of, you know, rather than having a DNF, I'd rather pick up some points here. I just hope that it's a decent amount of points and hopefully maybe we can still keep the podium in third place. That'd be very ideal for me, but we're going to have to just find out about that and cross that bridge once we get to it. And so here we come to that bridge as we now start on the restart here. The safety car is uh, bolted a little bit, but not too far, actually. I'm still catching the safety car as I want to get going as soon as I can because I've got a quite a nice gap, you can see, to Carlos Sainz there. So now we get going on the restart. I'm trying to accelerate as fast as I can but the safety car has not come in yet. Now it comes in so now the game lets me bolt and we've got an okay gap but now look how fast Carlos Sainz is going to come flying in even with overtake mode and Rich Miss going. The fact I'm having to short shift means that Sainz is on my inside there. He's very aggressive with the move. I guess he wants to get away from his teammate Ricardo there in third place and so we slot in behind for P2 but you can see how much speed we're losing having to short shift so quickly and we get a little bit flustered in this next right hand uh, locking up there and going way too deep in so Ricardo then brake checks us into that next corner. He's up into P2. So it is a Renault 1-2. And now it's the other worry that I had, which is not just the Renaults. It was other cars around me, which is also going to include Pierre Gasly in the Toro Rosso Honda. Here he comes now, the countryman, trying to do his uh, country proud at his home Grand Prix. Uh, trying to aim for third place. We're doing our best to squeeze him on the inside there. We're going to try and outbreak him if we can on the outside. We do get that, so we're back up into third place. So for now, we defend successfully, but this is going to be such a good run for Gasly because I have to climb up the gears faster than he he does. He can rev out his engine, rev out the gearbox, and he can fly by now, and he will get that on the outside there. I'm foot to the floor, full throttle. I can't do much, and now I'm going to try my best to send one on the outside and line this move up, but instead, I have to like now let off to make sure I don't hit the back of him, and then invites Hamilton to try one on my outside here. So I'm just going further down the order where P4, we get ahead of Hamilton and just squeeze by. And so we're going to maintain P4 and we've got a big train behind though. And so now I need to maybe stop panicking so much. I need to make sure I actually get this car to the end. You know, even if we get, you know, down to P9, heaven forbid, P10, that'll be better than DNFing on this Grand Prix with the gearbox here. You can see overtake mode there. I'm still revving up the engine a little bit because I still want to desperately stay ahead. But we also need to maybe play a bit clever and make sure I also protect the gearbox enough to get to the end of this Grand Prix so you can see I begin short shifting once again and not even letting the rev lights come to pass green really until we get to gear 7 maybe but you can see how bad that gearbox is now in shape we're really getting quite close to the extreme 100% that we had at USA so this is nerve wracking times on this last lap of the Grand Prix we've got overtake mode in rich mix to defend on this main straight into the chicane but that's not really the worry actually the worry will be the next straight just before the flat out right hander where Gasly overtook us. I think Hamilton might have a very good chance of doing the same thing to us as we now go down into that chicane. You can see we have maintained P4 but now look at this on the exit. We lock up a little bit. That's not going to help as well but then the exit just isn't there and as we have to short shift again making sure we protect the gearbox and lower gears. Hamilton's going to fly by there on the outside. This will be a fantastic move to be, a, be fair from him because he's not fully alongside us but he keeps it planted there. We're still on the outside though trying to do the best job we can and so it looks like we might have actually done it. it looks like we have defended from Hamilton. Yes, we pushed him off there and we're still on P4, but he still keeps gaining. Remember, also, he's on super softs. All these guys are, so they're also on quicker tyres. My softs have been on this car since lap 11, remember, as well. So we've also got the tyre wear factoring in, and so as we
we come through now, the second last corner to the last corner there. The gearbox, though, is going to go on the last corner. It's stuck in fourth gear. I can't go any higher than fourth gear. So Hamilton overtakes us. Van Dorn is going to get us on the line. We're down to P6 in the Grand Prix. Across the line, it's a double overtake there by Hamilton Van Dorn. So unlucky there because the gearbox literally jammed right at the last corner. I'll, re I'll replay the commentary back because the engineer tells me about that. We're showing a gearbox jam. You're going to be stuck in gear for a while. It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Renault. Anthony, what do you think made the difference here? Without a doubt, the safety car changed everything today. The key to their success was keeping calm and reacting to the situation quickly. We've seen teams in the past throw away wins because they were too hesitant, but here they were decisive and that's allowed them to take the advantage. So you would have heard that commentary. My engineer literally told me on the last corner, I'm going to be stuck in fourth gear for a while. So it was literally like a copycat uh, uh, gearbox failure I had at Monaco back in season one, I think it was, uh, where my gearbox got jammed for an entire lap. So actually I got lucky in a way, unlucky in some because I lost two places. But if we had one more lap of this French Grand Prix, I, that was it for me. I would have had a gearbox failure. I would have been stuck in fourth gear for the entire last lap of the Grand Prix. And I would have come with no points. I, w I might have made it to the end of the Grand Prix, but I wouldn't have got any points there. So it's kind of a silver lining in a way that happened then and there. So he's still got P6. So I can't complain too much, but... What a roller coaster of emotions that was. At one point, I thought, okay, easy win in the bag here, maybe. Then Renault comes pressurizing us. Then we have the gearbox failure, uh, or the, the kind of uh, the wear, if you will. Then we have the safety guard, the restart, the safety guard, the last corner there. Oh, so much drama in the French Grand Prix. And so it means Carlos Sainz uh, gets a bit of a lead in the championship and Renault overtake us in the constructors. So with a 1-2 for Renault here, could this be the start maybe now of the Renault dominance this season? I hope not. I hope not. But we'll have to see about that. It's going to be a very tough challenge. Clearly, they have a lot of pace now in their car. But we'll go to the end of the episode then and check out some contract negotiations because we've got the contract coming up now. But for now, it looks like Carlos Sainz will be beating me in the rivalry there on the right-hand side. But at the moment, we're ahead of Verstappen in this second rivalry. It kind of helps if we had that DNF, but we did not get fourth or better in that race then. So we don't get an extra 500 points in R&D. So that's hurting us not getting those bonus R&D points here. Uh, but first of all, we're going to successfully negotiate a new contract there. It wasn't as high as I could hope uh, I was hoping for, but it was still a lot better than we actually gone for. So that's a, at least a good thing with Red Bull. So far, every single contract I've negotiated has been better than the last one I had. So at least that's a, uh, that's a good thing going for us with the relationship with Red Bull Honda. But now for upgrades then, before we go to the end of the episode, I was very uh, I was very torn between what upgrade I do for the engine. I wasn't going to do an aero one because you don't need aero upgrades. The, the car's got enough downforce. We're waiting for the chassis upgrade. So all I had to do was engine upgrades, basically. And so in the end, I was very tempted to just save my resources points and wait until I could afford that ultimate uh, engine power upgrade. But instead, I'm going to go for a short-term minor engine power upgrade because I, my theory is that in the next episode or two, hopefully, I'll be able to fall that ultimate one. And so I'd rather get the minor one right now to cushion the blow at Austria and then get the ultimate and have that come in right at the end of the European season. So that's the way we're going to go about it then. So the minor engine upgrade coming next episode. And then after that, for the British Grand Prix, we'll have that ultimate chassis weight upgrade come in. So hopefully these two will help us pull the gap to Renault. And hopefully we can try and do some damage limitation in the next two episodes and try and uh, cushion the blow if Renault do indeed, uh, you know, start this momentum building from this 1-2. But guys, if you did enjoy that very dramatic French Grand Prix, then be sure to smash that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, you can subscribe for weekly full-on content. I've been ever. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.